Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm the Reverend William Levwood, the minister here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Akatink. And uh, my pronouns are he and him. As we begin our service, I invite you to silence your phone. If you're at home, to close the other windows on your computer, to take a deep breath as we center ourselves for worship. We open and welcome to the ancestral people of this land, acknowledging that our church, like all of Burke, rests on the unceded territory of the Manahoac tribe of the great Sioux Nation. We seek healing and the realization of justice with the people of this land who live on and their descendants, the present day members of the Monacan Indian Nation, the Padawomic Indian tribe of Virginia, and the Piscataway Indian Nation. We honor the ancestors as we move toward healing so that all together shall one day know full justice. So our chalice lighting words this morning are ones that we've done before but not in a long time and I'd like you to invite you to say them with me. So we're gonna do open mind, loving hearts, helping hands, and we're gonna add courageous spirits. So as we light our chalice, the symbol of Unitarian Universalism, this is the church of the open mind. This is the church of the loving heart. This is the church of the helping hands. This is the church of the courageous spirit. Welcome to Akatink Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm Judy Robison, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm happy to be your worship associate today. This congregation is a welcoming and inclusive community that seeks to create a more just and compassionate world. If you're new to Akatink and you'd like to talk more about this church, just ask anybody here and we'll tell you all about it. Our greeters, our minister, myself, or anyone with a cross-stitch name tag can, can talk about this church. Whether you're a longtime member, a newcomer, or something in between, we encourage you to stay for our social hour online and in person immediately after this service. We're so delighted that you have decided to join us here today. Welcome. We're beginning a new month, and our theme this month, our Soul Matters theme, is wonder. So today, we're going to look at wonder in this time of, of thinking about gifts and the excitement of gifts. We're going to think about the gift that wonder is in our lives and what wonder reveals to us. Next week, we're actually gonna use our Soul Matters curriculum a little bit more than normal and we're gonna look at some windows, some ways we can frame the world to open ourselves up to, to wonder in new ways. That's next Sunday. And then we'll celebrate Yule and Hanukkah the following Sunday um, and then of course Christmas Eve after that. Our reading today is a writing by Joy Harjo, Reconciliation, a Prayer. One, we gather by the shore of all knowledge as peoples who were put here by a God who wanted relatives. This God was lonely for touch and imagined herself as a woman with children to suckle, to sing with, to continue the web of the terrifyingly beautiful cosmos of her womb. This God became a father who wished for others to walk beside him in the belly of creation. This God laughed and cried with us as a sister at the sweet tragedy of our predicament, foolish humans, or built a fire as a brother to keep us warm. This God who grew to love us became our lover, sharing tables of food enough for everyone in the whole world. Two, 
O oh, sun, moon, stars, our other relatives peering at us from the inside of God's house, walk with us as we climb into the next century, naked but for the stories we have of each other. Keep us from giving up in this land of nightmares, which is also the land of miracles. We sing our song, which we've been promised has no beginning and no end. Three, all acts of kindness are lights in the war for justice. Four, we gather up these strands from the broken web of life. They shiver with our love as we call them the names of our relatives and carry them, home, carry them to our home made of the four directions and sing of the south where we feasted and were given new clothes, of the West, where we gave up the best of us to the stars as food for the battle, of the North, where we cried because we were forsaken by our dreams, of the East, because returned to us is the spirit of all that we love. All we have is our stories. So I'm going to begin by sharing a story with you this morning. This telling comes from Robin Wall Kimmerer's book, Braiding Sweetgrass. It's about the first human being in the Potawatomi or the Anishinaabe tradition. His name is Nanabozo. And when he's put on this earth, he has many questions like, how he's going to find food, and how he's going to find his way. So he starts his journey across the land, walking from place to place, considering the original instructions, understanding that all knowledge he needs in order to live is present in the land that his role is not to control or change the world as a human, but to learn from the world how to be a human. So he journeys in the four directions in search of values to guide him. In the East, he discovers the need to keep learning, growing, and evolving receiving the lesson that Mother Earth is our wisest teacher. And here he is given the gift of tobacco for sending questions up and out into the world. He travels next to the south, where he learns about protection, how the good green earth sustains us and protects us, and how we are called to sustain and protect all life on earth. Here he is given the gift of cedar. He journeys next to the north and learns the ways of compassion and kindness and healing. Learns to widen the circle of healing to include all of creation even those who've made bad mistakes. For who hasn't? In the North, he's given the gift of sweet grass, which scents the path with sweetness and leads to a landscape of forgiveness and healing for all who need it. Finally, he travels to the West to learn about power and balance. Here, fire teaches him that all powers have two sides, the power to create and the power to destroy. That the fire that can consume the land is the same fire that warms our homes. And here, he's given the gift of sage as a reminder to participate in keeping the balance of the powers in the world. So it occurred to me as I was reading this story this week 
that it's, these values have some similarity to the new covenant and values draft that has been put out as a proposal to replace our seven principles. Colleen mentioned our eighth principle, which this congregation anonymous, anonymously, unanimously voted to approve. And that's been woven in under the value of justice into these new proposed values statements. So I give a lot of feedback when we had the recent opportunity to give feedback and played around a lot. I got a little bit obsessed with it. Um, and one thing I did was collapse the six values with love at the center, that's the seventh, and then six values into four, kind of like the four directions. And so I wanted to share a little bit about those. So two of the proposed values are pluralism, the fact that we draw on multiple sources and the wisdom, all the many wisdoms that we bring from our cultures and our traditions and our wonderings, and also evolution, the way that the world is always changing and we are called to innovate and adapt to that world. I prefer the words creativity and diversity over pluralism and evolution, but regardless, we're speaking of the same values. We'll see if they take those suggestions or not. I trust them, I really do. We are always learning and growing, just as Nana Bozo learned when he traveled to the East. They also suggest the values of interdependence, and here the wording is almost exactly the same as our current seventh principle, but also of generosity. And I thought interdependence and generosity, if you put those together, influenced, myself influenced by Robin Wall Kimmerer, you have reciprocity, that give and take. Our faith is a faith that journeys that path of interdependence and generosity, that path guided by the values of reciprocity, Gra grateful for the gifts that are given and generously giving back in turn. The next value is similar to our first principle under the header of equity. And I also thought about where, where democracy should be in this, which a lot of people have asked because it's not in that initial draft. And I thought maybe put it in here with equity where we lift up the worth and dignity of each person because we each have a voice and should have a vote and a say. And the reason for that, I think too, I, I thought about the where democracy falls short as well, right? In the sense that a majority can impose their will on a minority. And I thought, you know, really we need to come together in a, a unified solidarity that looks at the needs of all of us, including the natural world, and is focused on the common good. I thought of that phrase, one for all and all for one. And that brings us to the fourth or the sixth, depending on whether you're collapsing them into four or keeping the sixth that the draft has of justice, which I think also is about balance, that balance of powers that I spoke about when I talked about Nana Bozo's journey to the West. Our faith is a movement towards beloved community, a beloved community that is diverse and multicultural, this is what we are not, not yet. We are not yet multiculturally diverse, not in who sits in our pews, nor in how we do church. But we need to dismantle racism and all forms of oppression within ourselves, our institutions, our society to help bring our world and our communities back into balance using power to empower, power to empower each other rather to, than oppress each other. And then finally, there's that love in the center, in the draft, that spirit animating and guiding all the other values. 
because all powers have two sides, the power to create and the power to destroy. So we center ourselves in love so that we invest our gifts on the side of creation, so that our gifts are powered and inspired and energized by love, are guided by love, and return us always to love. Love is the spirit animating and guiding all the other values. And I think it gives us an opportunity to have a theological center that equally expresses the commitments of theists and atheists among us, of the humanists and the spiritual but not religious. All of us are energized and guided by love. So I want to return us to that journey with Nanabozo, walking the world for the first time, seeing the world for the first time. Invite us, as he did, to move in humility, remembering that first thing that Nanabozo learned, that all the knowledge needed in order to live is present in the land. Like Nanabozo, we are instructed to listen, to observe, to open our eyes, our ears, our nose. Notice that all four of the gifts that he received have a scent. Sage, sweet grass, cedar, and one more. What am I forgetting? Tobacco. Even our skin, opening our skin up to feel the breeze, opening our tongue to taste the world, opening our hearts. And Nana Bozo is told to learn the names and gifts of all life around him. Not to name the animals, as Adam does in the Bible, but to listen and learn the names, to open in wonder and receive the gifts wonder reveals. Without this openness, we suffer. Robin Wall Kimmerer shares that philosophers call this state of isolation and disconnection species loneliness, a deep unnamed sadness stemming from our estrangement from the rest of creation, from the loss of relationship with the world around and within and among us. As our human dominance of the world has grown, she continues, we have become more isolated, more lonely, no longer able to call out to our neighbors. And so Nana Bozo journeyed through the land, and we can journey through the land, listening and learning the names and gifts that wonder reveals, learning from our elders who were here before us. Nana Bozo learned this. When he was hungry and needed food, he watched what the animals were eating. Heron taught him to gather wild rice. And one night, by a creek, he saw a little ring-tailed animal carefully washing her food with delicate hands and thought to himself, ah, I should only put clean food in my body. Beaver showed him how to make an axe. Whale gave him the shape for his canoe. In his mind, grandmother's spiderweb became a fishing net, and the plants, too, revealed their gifts and shared them with him. Like Nanabozo, we can do this, too. We can walk in wonder. We can open to what the gifts of wonder reveal, and we can share our own gifts in return. Robin Wall Kimmerer, who you might remember is a botanist and also a bryologist. That means a plant scientist and a moss scientist. She speaks of turning off or trying to turn off her science mind and encountering the world with an anabozo mind, pointing to the danger that once we've assigned a scientific name to something, it can stop our exploration. It can 
potentially close off wonder. And so with her Nanabozo mind, she moves through the forest and she says that Pisia Sicensis becomes strong arms covered in moss. That Thuja Placata reveals key self as branch like a wing. I want to offer this awe-inspiring practice to you. What if the tree outside the window that I looked at as I prepared this sermon, whose scientific and even common name, I shamefully admit I don't even know, what if it becomes dark amber leaves holding on in late autumn? What if the geese flying overhead become harbingers of winter frost? What if yesterday's dark, cloudy, rainy day becomes mother of the bright flowers that will bloom in the spring? Even the pajama pants that were draped across my bed as I prepared this sermon can become gift of the green, of the good green earth and the supple human hands. These are some examples of the gifts that wonder reveals. You know, we often speak of, and in the modern age we're tormented by, the human mind's negativity bias. But there is another side to that story. And when we open in wonder, I think we realize that we are just as much evolved in an embrace that envelops us in a calming, nourishing, energizing beauty as we are gifted with the fear that keeps us safe from danger. When we open in wonder, we realize we are embedded in the world, that we belong here. We have evolved, we have co-evolved in a collective and often collaborative journey with all the other life with whom we share this beautiful blue boat home. We need, and I do mean need, not as a demand from above, but as a deep calling from within, a deep calling that might show itself as that species loneliness. We need to open in wonder and receive the gifts that wonder reveals. We need to lift our gaze, as I spoke about a few months ago, from the page, the written page from the computer screen, from the covetous grip of the phone, the phone that we hold while it holds, or rather grabs our attention, grabs it greedily and doesn't let go. We need to lift our gaze and open in wonder to receive the gifts wonder reveals the gifts we cannot possess and likewise will not possess us. What if, what if we journey into this holiday season moving through our lives like Nanabozo, walking the world for the first time, opening to the gifts wonder reveals? How might this change our relationship to things? to the thingification of our world, to consumerism and capitalism and materialism. What if, what if the gift we give to each other this holiday season is the taste of an orange, renamed bright sun-like star, exploding tingle tongue sour and satisfyingly sweet in my mouth? What if the gift we give each other this holiday season is our attention renamed, I love you more than my phone, darling. I value you more than my to-do list. I adore you more than Mozart streaming through the invisible web of technology with the illusion of immortality. I give you my attention. You, beloved, embodied, messy-haired, mismatched, clothed, annoyingly frustrating, beautifully alive, creative, kind, compassionate, passionate, justice-loving, wide-eyed, sometimes sad-eyed you. I give you my attention. You, beloved, once green-leaved, now dark amber-leaved, soon to be bare-branched, oxygen-giving, energy-preserving, wisdom-teaching, deep-rooted, sunlight-reaching, 
embattling, embattled and enduring you. I give you my attention, you, beloved, purring on my lap, biting gently when you've had enough affection, meowing for food in the morning, hunting my toes beneath the covers in the middle of the night, dancing through the world with more power and grace than I knew was possible, wild, wonderful, sharing a home with me, you. I give you my attention. You who are sick, you who are hurting, you who are crying, laughing, shouting, you who are celebrating, you who are scared, you, are, you who are hoping and wishing, you who are wondering, you who are wide-eyed and wondering, I give you my attention and you give me yours. I give you my attention and you reveal your gifts, your many wondrous gifts. O oh, wondrous world of living beings, the true web, the sacred web, we give the gift of our attention to you. We open in wonder and we find connection. We open in wonder and our loneliness dissolves, dissolves like miniature globes of crystal clear hope, formerly known as dew, joining the sky on a clear spring morning. May we walk again in wonder as Nana Bozo did at the dawn of the world. Nana Bozo, whose story in the circular understanding of his people didn't happen long ago and far away, but as the beginning of the circle of song that we've been promised has no beginning or end, the circle that teaches us that the farther we get from that beginning, the closer we get to the end, the closer we are to returning. Do you see that? How the circle, if it starts here, when we travel the farther away, when we get to that end, we return to the beginning. Nana Bozo's footsteps are still here. They're still here. All we need to do is what he did at the beginning on that first journey, to open our eyes in wonder, to open ourselves in humility. And when we do that, the world will reveal her gifts to us, the true gifts from the true web, the sacred gifts from the sacred web, the gifts of justice and generosity, of equity and interdependence, of diversity and, evo and an evolving collaborative creativity, the sacred gift of connection, of love that saves us from loneliness, that loneliness that fuels the hungry ghosts of our greed, our fear, and our destructiveness. So may we open in wonder, may we open to the gifts that wonder reveals. May we remember that Nana Bozo's footsteps are still here and we can step into those footsteps. Love is all around us. Love is all around us. May we rejoin the circle. Though we will extinguish our chalice flame, we carry within us what we kindled the light of inspiration, the warmth of compassion, the fire of commitment. May we bring these gifts into our lives and share them into the world. I invite you now to join in our community blessing with these words of David Bumbaugh. This church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences and beneath all our diversity, there is a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together in spite of time, death, and the space between the stars. We pause now in silent witness to that unity. You may be seated. I hope that we've created some more joy and aliveness and vitality and that you step out today with your eyes and ears, your nose, your tongue, your skin, 
open in wonder.